Good morning, Greendale. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 community running gags. If you like these kind of videos, check out Ms. Mojo's Funniest TV Running Gags playlist to see the most hilarious running gags in shows like Friends, Parks and Recreation, and more. Click on the link below. For this list, we're taking a look at our favorite recurring jokes from the cult hit, Community. We'll be excluding Easter eggs or behind the scene gags, as clever as they may have been. Number 10, Pop Pop. There seems to be one at every school, the guy with the catchphrase. First off, Pop Pop. <laughs> no one's quite sure what it's supposed to reference, but they love it and feel it works just the same. Pop Pop! Now. Such is the case with side character Magnitude, who is best known for his signature slogan, Pop Pop. As one of the on-campus party dudes, he apparently first coined the slogan when Annie ran through a window and two balloons popped in succession. <laughs> Odd Genesis aside, the phrase and his little raise the roof gesture that accompanies it are consistent throughout the show and consistently get laughs. Number 9. Shut up, Leonard. Hey, guys, thanks for eating all the macaroni. Shut up, Leonard. Nobody even knows what you're talking about. Leonard is one of the older students of Greendale, and like all people of advanced age, he is widely respected for his insight and acumen. Just kidding. Like some elderly folks, he gives his thoughts and opinions very freely, with little prompting, and the members of the study group and beyond are pretty quick to dismiss him with a rousing declaration of, shut up, Leonard, followed by some sort of call out to deflate him. You're gonna look like an ass in those. Shut up, Leonard. I talked to your son on family day. I know all about your gambling. Leonard never takes the not-so-subtle hint, and is sure to start running his mouth again soon thereafter. But he never seems to take offense either, resulting in a hilarious, vicious cycle. All hail Sir Eats Alone! Shut up, Leonard. I heard about your prescription socks. Number 8. Changwidge and Denotation dina ling a -ling. Changwidge and Denotation are two mostly nonsense words to describe the way Dean Craig Pelton and Senior Ben Chang talk. Trust me. I know these vents like the back of my chain. One of the signature habits of the eccentric faculty members is to insert their own name or title into a word or sentence. Ancient weaponry, genital mutilation, the subjects talking much language. These puns crop up frequently, especially the Dean's greetings, and with increasingly loose relation to whatever words either Chang or Dean are replacing. It's just one of the many little idiosyncrasies that make Greendale Community College such a bizarre and magical place. On TV, that is. In real life, you'd probably lose your mind after a semester. Welcome to Deandale Community College, Dean. I'm a silly goose. Number 7. Britta's the Worst Ah, oh, Britta. Set up in the first episode to be a love interest slash cool girl, she quickly gets on everyone's nerves with everything from her scattered politics and her cringeworthy attempts to be sensitive on all matters, to her pronunciation of the word bagel. How do you pronounce bagel? I don't. Come on. Bagel. Ugh. You're the worst. It's all earned her the reputation for being, for lack of a better term, the worst. It's all done in good fun, but you'd think it would grate on a girl's confidence. You're the worst. When Troy leaves, he tells her she's the best, wrapping the long-running joke nicely. Almost spread it our goodbye, huh? I'm the worst. You're the best, and I love you. <laughs> Number six, rhyming names. The great thing about this one is its casual nature. Well, well, well. Harvey Keitel. The study group picks up a habit of beginning a phrase and then rhyming it with a name. My, oh my, my Ty. Son. It's the sort of silly things that friends do in real life, casually competing to see who can come up with the sickest burn, or in this case, the most unique or clever rhyme. It's never really called out directly, except once when Annie may or may not have just made up a name on the spot to finish her rhyme. Yeah, that one seems too convenient. Bring it on, Ponce de Leon. I'm gonna, Greg Muldana. It's a real guy. He owns a mattress store downtown. You can look it up. Sometimes they don't quite rhyme, but are instead puns. But hey, this game's all about good fun, so we'll give it a pass. Kick, don't reach. Hey! Christina Ricci, I said kick. Number five, Jeff's speeches. I wanna say something, sit down. Many shows from family sitcoms to South Park use one character as the moral center of a group to voice the message or lesson at the end of each episode. 
Like South Park, Community uses this trope as a joke. Because if anyone can take the moral high ground, it is not Jeff Winger. We're the only species on Earth that observes Shark Week. His speeches usually come in a moment when the group is fracturing and needs a pep talk to rally them back together, summarizing what the conflict is and what they have done or will do to overcome it. The apex of this running joke is this ultimate speech that shows just how formulaic they are and how hilarious. El Corazon del Agua es verdad. That water is a lie! Harrison Ford is irradiating her testicles with microwave satellite transmissions! Number four, Annie's boobs. Not her actual boobs. After Abed gifts Troy a pet monkey, he takes to Twitter to pull what its name should be. Isn't that right, Annie's boobs? Please rename that thing. The results land on Annie's boobs. Bodie McBoatface could have told you that this is what happens when you pull the internet. Annie is understandably annoyed with the name, but it sticks nonetheless. But when the pet is released and escapes into the air ducts, we are then treated to several seasons with the occasional mention of the antics of Annie's boobs. Turns out it's a kleptomaniac. Who would have thought that inappropriate naming could have such excellent results? Number three, Dean Pelton's outfits. So Dean Pelton is odd. This was established early on in the series. Between his denotations, harebrained ideas, and not so subtle infatuation with Jeff Winger, he is eccentric to say the least. This is punctuated by occasional and then increasingly frequent costume changes. Yeah! It's Feline AIDS Awareness Day, folks, so let's whip it in the keister. Although they are topical in the beginning, relating to either a holiday or a theme running through the episode, eventually they're just, well, just cuz. The man just loves to dress up. Way to live your life, Dean Pelton. Way to live your life. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Number two, Daybreak. This one's so subtle, you would be excused if you missed it. Daybreak is a jazz song by Michael Haggins. During a horror story that Abed was telling, the song became featured, and Abed stopped his narration to hum a little riff of it. The catchy tune has since been hummed by other characters or been softly played in the background, a subtle nod towards its enduring infectious melody. Vulnerable without a gun. Ugh, the only song that plays in this thing. As it is Abed's favorite song, a cameo was reportedly discussed for musician Michael Haggins, but sadly, this little meta extra did not come to fruition. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Because you guys usually spend the first 20 minutes talking about your interesting personal lives and your cool emotional problems, and I just feel like I never have anything to offer. Aww. Do they do stuff to your butt? No. Do you get paid more if they do stuff to your butt? No. It's fine. I'll do it. I'm in. Captain Barnes. We should probably set sail while the wind is still in our favor, don't you think? Number one, Troy and Abed in the morning. Troy and Abed are the epitome of friendship goals. Of the many fun and crazy stunts they pull, the most memorable is Troy and Abed in the morning, thanks in large part to its super catchy jingle. Troy and Abed in the morning! Nice. They begin this little morning news segment, sometimes with an audience, guest interviewee, or just by themselves. They're not actually broadcasting anything, just fooling around, playing off each other while having fun. They even create a logo and customized coffee cups for themselves. The jingle is not exclusive to their news segment, but is also applied several times to things they do together, just goofing off. It's pure silly pop culture fun, which is what Community was always about. Troy and Abed and Annie in the morning. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing, my ass. What are all these cameras doing here? Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.